Uh, we stood in shock as Leslie, this is Leslie Sachs, uh, one of the leaders of Women of the Wall, spoke to us in English, and then Nofrat in Hebrew, confirming that Anat and the Sefer Torah had been arrested, confirming that we had done nothing illegal, that the Supreme Court ruling was very explicit about what could and could not be done, and did not forbid a woman carrying a Sefer Torah in the plaza, and we were certainly within our explicit right to carry it outside the plaza where the full assault by the police actually happened, and that now we were going to march to Yaffa Station and Davin Musa for Rosh Chodesh outside their walls. When we got there, no fraught led. We were told that the group's lawyer was with Anat, and we were told that she could hear us from where they were holding her. We sang and sang, and I was not repulsed by the cameras anymore. Then the waiting began. Someone went and brought us cases of ice water. The police would not let us move into the shade, and most of the women were dressed for a sheltered early morning service, not for the glare of full sunlight. You could tell the Americans, because we were turning red like lobsters, while the Israelis stayed looking just the same. Leslie was begging everyone who could to tweet or text or call home to do so and get the word out. The song I remember most was Ozi Vizimra'ya Vayahi Lilishua. The Lord is my strength and my might. Hashem is my deliverance. We were praying for her to be delivered. We were praying for her to be redeemed, like captive Jerusalem. I cannot begin to convey the pain and insanity of adult, educated Jews who've gathered for a Jewish prayer service, waiting outside a police station in the hopes that one of their leaders and their Sefer Torah will be released because they have done this in Jerusalem. We are still praying as I write this. When I left at 12.15 with a sun glare headache, there were only two women left, one of them Leslie Sachs, whose cell phone had died, destroying all hope of the in and out communication that is so important to her. Ten minutes after I left, by the time I had reached the yeshiva and was typing this, a knot had been released. Um, I don't mean to sound conspiracy theory, but there was no reason they were holding her that long. I am told they kept looking out the window, and apparently my leaving, well, there's speculation that they were trying to get down to the absolute fewest number of people and cameras waiting to receive her before letting her go. I want to finish what I wrote at the time. The last thing that we were told is that they were detaining her pending consultation with the Attorney General. Leslie explained to us that although the Supreme Court ruling does not forbid a woman carrying a Sefer Torah in the plaza, the police have been exercising their right of discretion over all bags brought into the plaza, a right they have for security purposes, to prevent women of the wall bringing in their Torah in its familiar duffel bag. The reason Anat had said that it was a while since the Sefer Torah had been in procession is the police had been confiscating it every month, and this month the Torah was hidden in a different bag with a different carrier. 
My writing breaks off at this point as the computer I was using started to crash. Um, the police legal argument, such as it was, was that Anat had violated Minchag Makom, the custom of the place. The most important thing I wanted to convey when I sent this out was the main thing that got cut off. There were no large protests. There were no significant complaints. There were three brief complaints and one man yelling, one man versus 120 women and about 30 men worshiping, worshiping Hashem at the Kotel. Um, there was no threat of violence before the police began to commit violence. This was not about interpretation of Jewish law. This was not about interpretation of Israeli law. The only thing this arrest was about was the police themselves on their own reconnaissance had set an arbitrary line that to them represented their police authority. And when that arbitrary line, which does not match the legal line set by the Supreme Court, when the arbitrary line that defined their control to them was crossed, they responded they responded with violence. This was not about halacha. This was not about keeping the peace. This was about police as individuals protecting their own sense of authority against what they perceived to be a political, not a Jewish, not a spiritual group. 